So you're looking for a piano and you've come to the internet. A great place of misinformation, disinformation, good information, bad information. Today Ted and I are going to go over some good information hopefully. The 10 things you need to know before purchasing a used piano. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Ted, this is it. This is it. The our definitive list. list of the 10 things you need to know before purchasing a used piano. But the main important thing we're not counting is one of the 10. I know. This is this, so we. We made this list and we discussed what's the most important thing in all of this? Trust. Trust. And that's why you are not in a store. That's why you're online trying to find the right instrument because you need to at least be ready to trust yourself when you go into a store or when you look on Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace or wherever you're looking for a used instrument is a very it's a very scary place because defense your defenses need to be up because you're like people can be well that too and the other the other reason why trust is important is because whether you know a little or a lot or some about pianos if you go into a piano store and you're assuming as sometimes that these people know something about pianos and then you find out that this is what a piano action look like and there's a bunch of parts and there's 88 of those and it's all it it can get really intimidating mm -hmm. so oh you don't want to buy that piano because it's got this in it it's like what does that mean uh, so the trust factor is really important and I, I, that's the one thing we always say is like if you don't know what you're doing you can trust in your dealer assuming that there's a history of trust there mm -hmm. if, as long as he's not off the side of the road with pianos and a sign pointing at him I mean that could be a good sale too right but yeah. at the same time you want to you want to purchase a piano from someplace where they know what they're doing they know what they're talking about so that you don't overpay or get something you don't want yeah so I think it's important to just in the back of your mind always be remembering can I trust this process can I trust where I'm purchasing this from um, just because yeah it, it, it's we live in a world with lots of things and and uh, and everyone puts together it's really strange because when people first come in and, and they're shopping for a, a used piano they always have well I have a few questions first and it's never really about the money or how much they cost it's always about how about if there's already a piano in the family and, and this, that, and the other? So you have to talk about relocating some things, uh, getting some things worked on. But there are 10 basic things that, that we kind of came up with that can truly, truly help you narrow down the search, save some time, and save some money in aggravation, and get the purchasing process finished so that you can start learning if it's you or a student or whatever it is and yeah. get on with it. Yeah, so let's, let's just start at the top of the list. Finding out the purpose or the use of the instrument. That's our number one. I think it's a very important thing to, you know, not only in your life, but in music and, and uh, your intention of buying an instrument, a used instrument, if it's for your kids, if it's for you, if it's a gift for somebody, know what the purpose of it will be. Um, and that's the best way to diagnose what you need is to know what do I want out of this? You know, do I want you know, a year of, of entertainment. What's that worth to you? If I want five years of piano lessons, do I want my kid to have music in their life growing up and, you know, help them get in, you know, get into college later? Do I want, do I want it to be my passion later in life? Uh, there's, there's all these reasons why you might be buying an instrument or buying a piano in this case, um, but kind of honing in on what is the purpose, the, is it a sure. furniture piece for your house, you know? Sometimes I got this perfect bay window and it outlooks over the pool or the water, whatever it is, and a piano right there would be great. And usually when people think that, it's a grand piano. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, if they set up a little you know, bar area or a party area or a game area in the house, sometimes they imagine an upright against the wall that's kind of empty. But the other, the other purpose thing is it's for a beginner. It's for a returning adult. Or it's a second or third piano purchase for the for the person in other words their their first four or five years on a spin it is over with they're on their intermediate piano now they're getting ready to go into college and do stuff and they need a better instrument one that could take more pounding sometimes they need one that's quieter for the mm -hmm. dorms too yeah. so there's a lot built into the purpose it's always not just beginner or returning adult player yeah and in, in, in this question you can kind of uncover a lot like do i need headphones do i need it to be quiet at times do i need it to 
uh, be lightweight? Do we move move often? I have the mute pedal. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of great questions to ask yourself in this process, but uh, number one is figure out what the purpose is and your need, um, and maybe start looking at um, you know different options that fit those purposes, or at least have those questions in mind when you go look. Um, I would say second on our list is brands and knowing the stories about those brands. And not, not that you have to be an expert by any means, but kind of know what the top brands are um, and know, uh, you know, just know that there's a lot of confusion in this category because there was at a point thousands of manufacturers of pianos in, here in America and they all have different names on them. And so it can get very confusing very quickly um, to, when you're looking at used instruments and say, oh, you know, we had this whole, you know, something in Smith Sons. Right. Most piano manufacturers have, um, the ones that you're going to encounter and see a lot of are going to be ones that, while they, some of them made hundreds of pianos, there's literally other piano man manufacturers that have put out thousands of pianos a year. And those are the ones that you're going to encounter the most and more of when you go out shopping for a used piano. The names you're going to see are going to be pretty obvious. They're going to be Yamaha, it's going to be Kawhi, it's going to be Baldwin, probably a lot of Wurlitzers, and maybe even the next one up, I would say... You're going to see Samick, you're going to see Samick, Yung Chang. you'll start seeing some, yeah, so, some others like that as well. I was mostly thinking of American manufacturers because yeah. we get a lot of those. Because a lot of times people are looking for spinets, and there's not a whole lot of spinets outside of the United States. Most of those were really made. It's very hard to find a Yamaha spinet piano. I don't believe Kawhi ever made one. Yamaha and Wurlitzer did. So there's a lot of, I mean, Baldwin and Wurlitzer did. There's a lot of Baldwin and Wurlitzer spinets out there. So, so again, lots of names, uh, but just know that there are uh, just a handful of manufacturers that still make pianos today. Um, and usually the more common of a name that you see, the more likely it is that that's a, a better trusted name. Um, so kind of keeping that in mind, Baldwin, Yamaha, Kawhi, uh, Young Chang, The, the bigger names are pianos, I mean to cut you off, the bigger names in pianos are the ones that are gonna have a little, they're gonna have a lot of quality when they were initially built new and they were not built to last you know, with planned obsolescence, these instruments were built to last more than one lifetime. Some of them even multi-generations. And, and we'll put out there too, Steinway is a great name um, and lots of great used pianos built under the Steinway name. It is going to be one of the more expensive ones and it doesn't necessarily correlate to how great of a starting instrument it is or how great um, of an intermediate instrument it is. It, it kind of is uh, one of those instruments that you can pay a lot for because of the brand recognition. And they've always been like a, a upper line manufacturer so they didn't produce thousands and mm -hmm. thousands of pianos as compared to Baldwin did in their heyday. Yeah, and we, we only say that because a lot of times people know Steinway as the brand and they come in there, oh, I'm looking for a Steinway. And you know you probably won't see that many of them, especially in the affordable price range. Um, number three for us is know the type of piano you're looking for. There are you know, three primary, primary types. There's uprights, there's grands, and then there's digital pianos. Um, and not to get too in depth on that, but kind of knowing space constraints, knowing what are the, what are the basic differences between these um, when it comes to uh, your needs are going back to that purpose again if you right. know if it's something that you know you want out in the living room and you want you know it to look beautiful and you want the grand piano you can know that the keys are longer on a grand piano um, a different action than an upright piano where it's more compact and really needs to be up against the wall a digital piano has the benefit of adding you know headphones adding different sounds recording there's, there's benefits to all of them um, and just kind of knowing what you're looking for I think is very important and then there's also different sizes um, when it comes to absolutely the height on an upright when it comes to the length on a grand piano and then digital pianos so there can be all shapes and sizes really and that's reflected in the price too yeah and so that, that's number four for us is, is budget and there's things about budget is I'd say that uh, the people that are happiest with their with their pianos are the ones that have a reasonable budget, and by reasonable I mean they're, they're, they for the most part know that you're going to get kind of what you pay for on a, on a used piano. And a lot of times people are very uh, locked in, especially in the last two years, if they say I have $10,000 to spend on a piano and I want to get the most amount of piano that I can and I don't want to go over that. And so there has been a few instances where there's a little bit of leeway, but most times if you have a budget and it's reasonable, 
stick to it and you'll be able to get a great quality instrument. Yeah, and, and just knowing what you want to spend um, and sometimes giving that information to someone that you trust and say, find me the best the piano. Most helpful thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, find me the best piano in this price range is, is, I know it sounds like it's a dangerous move, but really someone who loves music, a piano player, a lot of times uh, people who sell pianos are, you know, have loved playing piano for a very long time. Um, they can usually, you know, verbalize to you why this piano is this much and at this price range is a really a nice deal. And especially what we've seen during the pandemic is, is a lot of the upper quality used pianos have been very quick to go to new homes and people who've always wanted to invest a little bit more in music have purchased very quickly. Um, and so it's even driven the price up in the last five years on used instruments. Um, so where you are paying for some of those name, name brands, Yamaha, Kawhi, Steinways, um, you're, you're going to be paying a little bit more than I th I've ever seen the price before. Right. Um, and so just having that budget in mind can be super helpful um, and, uh, and kind of can help you realize. Uh, and, I, and the way to make the budget, too, is, you know, what you can afford, but also thinking of the longevity of this instrument. Um, if you're willing to do something like finance, uh, there is uh, some great options to, you know, say, okay, this is going to last me, you know, 50 years, or this can, I, my right. kids are going to take this piano. If I invest a little bit more, what is it worth in the long term? Um, and what am I getting from that over, over time? Um, I think the next, the next one on our list was, where are you going to source this? Well, that, that comes back again to that trust thing. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're buying from, who are you buying from? And can you go back to them if you have a problem or if you're going to need something different? You know? Yeah, so it's kind of knowing that there are different places to buy a used instrument or to acquire one a lot of the times. Um, I, I just, a lady the other day was like, we're here because we just moved out the Craigslist piano that... that uh, um, We've had. Yeah, yeah. and so... And so a lot of times people will, will get a new, uh, uh, basically they'll in, inherit a, a, a used instrument either from a family member or from a teacher or from uh, the neighbor down the street or they get a new house and there's a piano in there. They get a technician out and the first thing the technician says, oh, I, I can't fix this. I mean, I can fix this, but it's going to cost more than the value of the instrument. Craigslist piano, are, they, regardless of the situation, they work great because it gets people up to play to where they realize, okay, I knew I was just getting a Craigslist piano, and now that I can play, I wanna go and get something good and see what it's like to go shopping for a piano now that I have skills. I, some of them don't play though. Some of them don't work at all. Some yeah, of them they I, inherit I think, and they're junk. I think more likely than not, some of them are sitting in garages and sitting, and that's something that we've seen more and more um, a lot of the times if someone is asking a, a reasonable price for something on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, that is a more likely situation that that piano is in good condition if they're right. asking value pro or market price for it instead of hundred dollars or free, just come move it. All, right. Those are the ones to avoid. The ones where they're actually asking for something that you can kind of research and say, well, what's the, the market price on this? Those are the ones that I would trust a little bit more. But again, it all goes back to trust. And if you feel like you can trust in a transaction like this, um, where you know it's, it's a lot of the times there's 10,000 parts in a piano and it can be um, scary to, to completely completely trust in right and um, what you're getting uh, next thing this one's one of the more fun ones I think but the aesthetic of the instrument that's something that you a lot of people don't realize that they have choices on they do and uh, the easiest customer is a diehard musician that doesn't care what it looks like that way there you can just get a great instrument and that's not everyone that's a very small percentage of the population most people want something that one is going to show some kind of pride of ownership. Mm -hmm. So you put it in a decent place in your home where it, it's people can see it. It's you know sometimes they put them in a window so you drive by. It always got that beautiful piano in the window. Mm -hmm. um, so the aesthetic is very important. We kind of touched on it before with and, the and I, I think it's it's a. Uh it's also interesting to put that in perspective of long-term value. If this is something that you know you're looking for a safer investment, um, a lot of the times people ask, well, you know, what is going to retain the most value? And you know, on a, on a baby grand piano, it's always a well, polished ebony, of course, because right. that's the one that when people think of a piano in their head, it's always shiny black in their right. head. Um, and so there are things to consider. You know, there's sometimes a very beautiful instrument, and and it's uh, an oak. And so, like oh. oak is one of those colors that has gone in and out of style. And I think it's coming back in at this point, like that lighter oak finish. We have one in the room over there right now, a Wurlitzer, and it's a wonderful piano. Except when you close it up, it looks like it was stolen from a church. It's a wood grain piano, and it's one of those light oaks. And it's rare that you see a grand piano 
in light oak. Yeah. But so, that is an aesthetic that's available. So just know the aesthetics that are out there, wood grain, polished finishes, satin finishes. There's a lot of cool choices out there. And if you look at used instruments, a lot of times you can get really cool carved instruments, a lot of you know wood design in those used instruments. And so sometimes you can find a really cool mid-century looking that's instrument. That's another thing is like, how old is the piano? What kind of condition? Yeah, is, is and so there? age that's... and conditions are number seven on the list, um, knowing exactly the story behind it, right? Well, there's some people that say, look, man, I want one of those mid-50s Art Deco mod looking spin it pianos that are blonde. And that's what they want. I want a blonde wood piano because it matches their stylish home entertainment system with the radio and the TV and you slide it open, the TV's in there and it's got a record player and it's all in one yeah. console. If you decorate your room like that or your man cave, you're gonna have to have the right kind of piano in there that matches it. And the older ones have different kind of looks to them. There's not a whole lot of what we call furniture pianos being manufactured in this day and age right mm -hmm. now. Most of them are kind of all blockish and institutional looking with the exception of some of the curvier grands. Yeah, and so, so uh, the aesthetic was number six, and I was number seven, age and condition. So when you do kind of look at some of those older instruments, I think it's very important to be aware of the condition of the instrument. Um, if it was one that sat in someone's home for 30 right. years, it's, it could be a, almost virtually a new instrument in the inside. If it, you know, was played very heavily in a bar for 30 years, it's going to be worn out. It's going to be worn out. The hammers are going to need replacements. The keys are going to be sticking. Um, and so there's a lot of on that spectrum of between age and condition, um, where you know a lot of the times, sometimes the wood ages a little bit better on an on an older instrument, but the hammers are way too hard. Right. And so there, there's just there's these trade-offs that happen with used instruments. And I think it's always very unique to hear you could have two of the exact same instruments made the exact same year from 40 years ago and sound completely different just because of the way they were treated, for, treated because of the, where they sat. Um, and so all this can sound very confusing. And so this is why we've put at our next one, bringing someone that you trust um, kind of harking back to that trust, that trust in this whole process, bringing a friend, a teacher, a technician, someone who's played piano before. Someone could tell you if maybe a salesman is BS and you are trying to sell you a line on something. Someone's got your back, basically. Got, yeah, and that's usually, it could be a teacher. Uh, a lot of times it could be just a friend that, that plays, uh, knows music well, knows pianos well. Uh, it could also be a guy that's a tuner or a technician. Um, it can also be anyone that just say, hey, I don't play piano, but I, I grew up around them and my family did. And I, I can tell you a, a good one from a bad one and one that needs work and one, one that doesn't. Yeah, and, and it's a little bit, uh, I think it, it's a, a fun experience. And I think some of the people I've seen come to the store and have the most fun are people who've brought a friend who Absolutely. played piano. And, you know, they, they, they're there for the, for the, you know, the support. The, the thrill and the joy. And, and uh, you know, it can keep you kind of in check rationally to having someone there in your, on your team, on your side saying, hey, remember you said in the car you wanted you wanted this instead of that. Right. Um, and so they can kind of keep you in check and also, uh, you know, you can have a safe word. Right. If, you know, Correct. if you don't trust the person, you can have a safe word and get out of there. Um, and so bringing a friend or teacher or technician, I, I highly recommend. I think it's, it's a great experience and um, kind of gives you a, a, a sounding wall to... Well, yeah, they can also tell you that so there could be some really minor repairs that need to be made. I mean, one thing that's a big stopping block for people, and this is our next item, I think, yeah, is repairs yeah. and maintenance, is they go to check out a piano and the pedals don't work. Well, in a car, that means the whole thing is screwed. On a piano, it means you just take it off and you reconnect the thing. It's just a physical, there isn't, it really isn't anything hard to fix, but it, it appears to be a real problem. It looks like, oh, this instrument's oh, broken. broken. Yeah, and so I think it's very important to, to know the difference of repair and maintenance on, on instruments in general, especially in pianos. Um, in the piano world, technician labor is very, very expensive. There's not that many people who do it, and it, there's not that many people who do it well um, or right. who are less than 80 years old. No offense to anybody. Right. right. Well, the, the maintenance issue is primarily the, the main number one thing on maintenance is to make sure that it's tuned and that the piano sounds as best as it can. Yeah, and then knowing that uh, if something needs a major repair, it's different than kind of just getting a tuning. Um, right. So there, the spectrum of the condition of the instrument uh, can be, you know, very simple to like, it needs a couple tunings to get back up to pitch to all the way that it needs new hammers, it needs regulation, it needs new strings, it need, and the, 
that's a huge, this, you know, we're talking a, a couple hundred dollars for some tunings versus $10,000 for a rebuild. Um, so the spectrum between repair and maintenance um, and knowing how an instrument's been cared for um, can really kind of let you know the, the true sure. history of the instrument. Sure, it makes all the difference in the world. If you remember, um, I don't know how many years that uh, uh, the S, well, we had an S6 that was down at the landing. Okay. And that piano sounds like it was in a harsh environment, but it really wasn't. It wasn't far from water. It was right by the river. And it was in a kind of a humid club. It was a jazz bar, It right? was a jazz bar. It was a club. So it's like, oh, great. But there, we, there was a top-of-the-line Yamaha piano of its time that went in there. And when it came out, that piano was, I'd say, it was better than new because it was seasoned perfectly. It had been tuned at least four times a year. Mm -hmm. And this was every year. And it sat there for years. And it... Didn't have anything fancy, didn't have any kind of cover on it or any of that uh, humidity control, but it was just maintained properly. Yeah, and so those are nine of them. We'll get to our 10th one here in just one second, but just to recap, again, having a purpose for the instrument and for yourself right at the beginning is huge. Knowing you know the basics about brands, whether it's uh, you know the new brands that you can buy today or um, some of the great used ones that we've that we've passed through. Um, knowing the type, if you're looking for a digital, an upright, a grand, um, and kind of sizing on that as well. Um, knowing your budget, knowing the source of where you're gonna be buying it from. Are you going to a store? Or are you gonna look on the used market on Facebook, on Craigslist? Uh, knowing the aesthetic you're looking for, the design. Um, if it is something older, knowing the condition and the age of that instrument. Um, and then all this stuff sounds very complicated, so bringing a friend, a teacher, someone that you trust, someone on your side is also very important. The repair and the maintenance, knowing the difference between those and kind of the spectrum that you can go through. Um, and it brings us all together to our number 10. It's the value dilemma. The value and dilemma. The perception of value. Did I pay too much or did I not get enough? It, this is the hardest thing. Because Did I get more than I paid for? This it? is one of the hardest things because in our day and age, we're constantly comparing. We have to because, see, we are a dealer and we just don't give you a piano and take your check. Most times there's a package. We're going to go back and tune your piano. We're going to make sure that all the other nine other things that are on this list are kind of accounted for. And so that's the important part. If you're not in our region, you don't buy from us, find someone that has some kind of after-sale contact, unless you know enough about a piano to wing it all by yourself. If you buy a piano from an individual, the first thing you're gonna encounter is how does it get home and who tunes it? Moving it, delivering it, and having it moved and delivered proper, that could be part of your purchase price value. Yeah, and so, and so we live in a world where we're constantly kind of comparing things against, okay, did I win or did I lose on this right. transaction? Um, and pianos just aren't that common of a purchase for people. Um, in, in certain circles, they are more popular, um, but finding transparency on pianos is one of the hardest things. And that's why we've created this channel. This is why we um, try to put as much information as we can out there to educate buyers um, is simply because there's not a lot of information out there. and. Uh, and I would say, you know, in the world of cryptocurrencies and buying, you know, buying low and selling high, a lot of times we, we get the mindset that, hey, I've got to win on this transaction on piano or, buy, or whatever this expensive thing I'm buying, I've got to win. And the reality is there's a whole bunch of circumstances that happen when people are A, selling pianos or buying pianos. And I think there's tremendous opportunities to spend $500 and overpay for something or spend $1,000 and underpay, underpay for something. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's crazy because every piano is different. They were all handmade at some point, all, especially on used ones. A lot of these that you look at are, were handmade at some point, um, and then they were cared for to a certain capacity. Well, I always like the value dilemma. The, to me, some of the best stories, and we have more of these than any of the others. Some of the others don't even exist, but the ones that I'm talking about is we make a deal, you, someone buys a piano, and the whole time you're thinking, I wish they really knew what they were getting. And then two weeks later, their friend will call, and they're overly excited. Hey, did you sell this Kawhi piano to this guy for this price? That model, is it brand new? Was it, was it used? Was it, you know, this stock or that stock? And we say, yeah. I said, man, that's a great deal. 
And so they immediately know what the other person just took on trust. Yeah. And so they come in and say, can you give me the same deal? And yeah. I've had that with grand pianos no, before. No, it's, and it's, there's some special pianos out there and special brands. And, and, and it's hard to, to use specific examples because it, it happens frequently where it's like, okay, well, that was actually a really cool instrument. And, you know, this was the story on it. But just it, it will, it's never overvalued because it's such a unique thing. That, right. that isn't highly sought after, but it is really a cool story, a cool instrument that was cared for. And a lot of the times you see super happy people out there that this is more than I had asked for. Then there's some people that, that you see them, you hear from them three, four years later, and it's always the dad that comes in. I got to be honest, you know, I really thought we were overpaying for this thing. But, you know, since we came in here and my kids were having fun, I started learning. Now I know, now I know how to play piano. And, well, I want to get us one that does more things and does all this kind of stuff. And that right there is the true value of having an instrument is that you don't really need it because you learned how to play an instrument and so wherever you go there it is you take it with you yeah you it's can a play skill that, instrument. It's, a, it's something that you've leveled up in yourself right? as you own and that thing gave it to you and it's, and so it's it's a very it's it's one of the most unique experiences and uh and learning music is great finding a used piano is a fun experience and then i think at the end of it all if you can be at purchase and have that instrument in your house whenever it gets there and say I'm happy with this. If you can say that and you can say, I'm going to take my next steps with this or, you know, I'm going to make sure whoever is getting this is happy, you know, like that, 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 that bond happens, then there's so much joy that happens with the instrument and it's not a whole bunch of checking off the boxes. Okay, did I get the right brand? Right, did I get the right. right type? Did I get the, did I spend my budget? Do I do all these things? And it's not about all those little boxes. It's more about like, am I satisfied with the trust I put out there, which is, you know, your money. And, and what I received back, am I happy with this experience? Am I happy with this instrument? And am I ready to grow with this? Am I ready to you know, stop looking backwards and like progress with this instrument? And, and hopefully the answer is yes. And hopefully you are loving your piano and loving your instrument because it, it brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. Yeah, it really is. It's one of, uh, the, again, the whole concept of having a piano and practicing and learning is to get the transmission of the joy of music inside of a person. Yeah. And so they have that with them at all times. Yeah. So hope you guys learned something. I hope you find that perfect used instrument because there are a lot of them out there and just looking for homes. Always, you know, we always call our, our piano floor. It's, a, it's an adoption agency out there because, you know, they're always looking for a new home um, and hopefully finds, you know, that person who's going to love it back. Um, this is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Marr. This was 10 things you need to know before buying a used piano. Thank you for watching.